Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We want to welcome everybody that's joining us by social media. Just start praising the Lord with us. Hallelujah. Right there where you are. Just start. If you lift your hands, don't be ashamed. Hallelujah. Just glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you, God. Father, we praise you. Jesus. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, you're worthy. Hallelujah. You are the God who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. We magnify you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. There's nothing bigger than you. There's nothing that compares to you. Hallelujah. There's no one that loves us more than you do. Hallelujah. There's no love greater than you. Ha ha. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Goshita. We praise your name, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Ha 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 ha. Yes. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just sense that there's, there's somebody that is either watching or is here that, you know, and I know this is an easy target, but this is what I'm sensing. I'll word it the way I word it. And then the Lord gives me more, gives me more. But I sense there's something specific somebody's going through. There's something specific. And you've been sensing a lot of pressure. You've been feeling a lot of pressure coming at you. And, 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 you're, and, and some of the pressure you're putting on yourself, some of the pressure is external. And you're magnifying the pressure by what you're, what you're putting into it. But begin to magnify God. Begin to praise God. God says, if you will praise me, I will show myself strong for you. If you will begin to exalt me, I will exalt you in this situation. For I have already seen where you're at. I have already seen this situation. And I knew about it before you, it even happened to you. And I have already made a way for you. So just begin to praise me knowing that I am with you. Begin to worship me knowing that I have made a way and I am still your God. Hallelujah. And as you begin to praise and magnify me, you will find that all these things will disappear and you will find that there was never a thing to worry about. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Father, we just come to you now. and We thank you for your word, God. We thank you for your precious spirit that is our teacher. He guides us and leads us into all truth. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for that anointing. Lord, we pray and ask and receive by asking for utterance. We yield ourselves to you, Father. We yield ourselves to your Spirit. Lord, the utterance, though, Lord, we want to say the right words. Help us to say the right words. Help us to say them with the right heart. Lord, we also just thank you, God, that you have given us ears to hear. Lord, we make a purpose decision to believe you to be attentive to you, to be the people that when Jesus said, let them that have ears to hear, let those that have ears to hear, let them hear. We're believing you, Lord, that we're hearing and we're not forgetful hearers, 
but we're doers. Praise you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Well, if you'll turn with me back to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. We're going to move on to the second part. Last week we talked about uh, mining wisdom. And basically, if, uh, what I, I've kind of given a name to this series. Of course, you know, everything's subject to ta change. But walking by faith is walking in wisdom. Walking by faith is walking in wisdom. And last week we talked about mining wisdom. And we started with Proverbs 25, 2, which says, It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search a matter out. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. Praise God. As I was sharing with y'all last week, and I'm just going to draw from a little bit from last week as we move forward, that God has hidden wisdom not from us, but has hidden wisdom for us. And the process of beginning to, to really seek God to live by faith, which Hebrews 11.6 talks about, to please God, for those that please God, you have to believe that he is and that you have to believe he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And when we're beginning to seek God, when you begin to seek God, even in every situation of your life, sometimes we know the will of God. We know the outcome God wants. He's given us a glimpse of the glory that he wants us to experience. You know, that outcome is that glory. Like if you're being fought with sickness or if your body's been under attack in some form or fashion, whether it's through sickness or injury, you know that it's God's will for you to be healed. So you already know the outcome that it's his will for you to be healed, but then you've got to seek God for the wisdom to receive and walk in, in that healing and health. Lord, how do you want me to go about it? Well, we should just confess the word. Well, maybe that's true. But which word should you confess? Sometimes we just go back to our old faithful scriptures. You know, we're quick to, we're quick to just go, well, by his stripes I was healed. Some of us go to that real quickly, and we probably haven't even looked at it in a long time. I remember something that I heard Brother Copeland say one time, because he said he was on auto mode. He was real busy. He was doing ministry, and, some, and something had happened to him, and, uh, and he was quoting his scriptures. He just went into auto mode of quoting his scriptures, which is a good thing. It's a good thing that at least you're running straight to that. But he started noticing that, his body didn't seem to be responding like he knew it should have. And he was standing and he was standing and then he began to seek the Lord. Lord, what's going on? What, when you say, Lord, what's going on? Lord, what you're saying is, Lord, I need some wisdom right now. Because I already know what your will is, but I need some wisdom. And these words came to him. The memory of a potato never fed anybody. See, we celebrated my daughter's birthday last night, and my wife made lasagna for her because that was my daughter's choice. That's one of her favorite meals is her, her mom's home-cooked lasagna. You know, and we ate that lasagna last night, and we was full, and we was more than content. Hallelujah. My brother came over. Boy, he was like, Morning, this stuff's good. Can I take some home? He was packing some up. But, you know, here we are this morning, and I'm sitting here talking to you about that lasagna, and it ain't making my belly any more fuller. 
I can think about how good it tasted. I can think about how filling it was when I ate it. But that memory of my that lasagna is not filling my belly. Actually, probably me talking about it is making stirring y'all up, making y'all a little hungry. So, brother Copeland, he said the memory of potato never. Never fed anybody. So what God was telling him is, is you're on auto mode, and the very scriptures you're standing on, you haven't taken the time to go back and refeed yourself and actually lay eyes on those and speak those things and, and stir those things in you. So he got the wisdom of God. So he made it to his house. He got his Bible open. He started going back over his scriptures. He started studying in that sense. Stirring himself up, feeding his faith. He might have got, I don't know specifically the details. He don't give me details in it, what he, when he shared that, but he might have, he might have broke a brother Hagen tape out. And began to feed himself. See, sometimes we need the wisdom of God and, you know, the Bible says that we must know who he is, but we also must know he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. To get the reward means the diligently seeking part, which means I know who he is. I know he's a healer. Now I need to diligently seek out him as healer. And by mining yourself for wisdom, by seeking after wisdom, the wisdom of God, you're, you can sit there and say, Lord, I've, you, you can fulfill the first part. Lord, I know what your will is. I know who you are. I know what you, I've, I've, I've learned some things about you, Lord. You've revealed yourself to me. But now I, I need to diligently seek you for who you are to experience that in my life, which means Mining the wisdom of God. I've heard another message. Uh, oh, it's been a long time ago, but it stuck out to me. I didn't really hear the whole message. The title just stuck out to me. And a revelation knowledge started coming when I heard the title and I heard a portion of the message. And it says, speaking the word of God with the voice of Jesus. The point of it saying is, is back to using the healing example. It's one thing to go back to those scriptures, but it's that 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 quickening of that word that's by the Spirit of God that gives you not just a logos, a word that you remember, a word you're referring to in the Bible, but gives you a rhema, a spoken word from God that is coming out of your mouth. Like using healing, he might sit there and say, the you, you may jump to Old Faithful, First Peter two twenty four, and say, "By his stripes we're healed." But then all of a sudden, he'll draw your attention over to the law, where he says that he will bless your food and water, and he will cause all sickness and disease to be driven far from you. All of a sudden, now you got a revelation. Wait a minute. He's telling me to begin to speak and believe the blessing over my food and water, which means maybe this thing came at me through my food and my drink. That's wisdom. That's the wisdom of God. That is a direct revelation by the Spirit of God in that situation that you're now speaking the Word of God with the voice of Jesus. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm trying to draw attention to you while we're studying this. I'm trying to remember because there's going to be some, we're, we're laying some foundation and there's some information coming at you and that information is revelation, but sometimes the information that comes at you at first, you're like, where are we going with this? Everybody loves the picture of a house, but you got to put a foundation first. You got to send the plumber out there with the plans, and they got to dig and lay all the different piping and stuff for it. Then the guys can go and put all the concrete down to make, and then lay the foundation. And you're walking out there, and some, except for yourself, somebody else walks out there, and they say, "I know it's going to be a house, but I just don't see it. I don't see what you're doing." But thank God for the vision that God has given you and then thank God for the wisdom that he's given the people that are put, that can see it 
before it's actually up and knows, well, wait a minute, I need to lay this here and here because, you know, this is the unseen things that makes the house operate and function for the benefit of the owner, the inhabitant. But we've got to realize that wisdom has been hidden back for us. Last week, I started trying to quote this, and I, 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 I was off by five chapters when I was trying to look for it. So I'm going to go back to it and correct that. Psalms 51.6 says, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts shall make me to know wisdom. Proverbs 2.7 says, He lays up or he conceals sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Colossians 2, 3 says, In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. 1 Corinthians 2, 7, 8 says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world to our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So in the hidden parts, he shall make me to know wisdom. He lays up or he conceals wisdom for the righteous. We're the righteous, right? He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God. So it didn't matter how we feel. It didn't even matter how we acted just last night. If you will allow and confess your sin, he's faithful and just to, to to forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness because he's made you righteous. It's not your righteousness, it's God's righteousness, but he's, you're still righteous because of it. So he has laid up or concealed some wisdom for us. In whom, which is referencing in Christ, which is also we are in Christ, you should identify as that, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And then it says the hidden wisdom of God, which was ordained before the world to our glory. So I'm reminding you that there's wisdom for us to mine out. Now I want to move forward and start talking about part two of this, wisdom hidden in the open. Because when I start talking about it's hiding and, and that we've got to seek after it, sometimes some people in their mindset and the enemy will come at us with their mindset and try to try to frustrate us and make us think that God is making it hard on us. So many people don't walk by faith because they think faith is hard. The only thing faith is hard on is your flesh. But actually, when you discuss the principles of faith and understand the heart behind faith, faith is like this, and I, I mean no irreverence. I'm just trying to show you how simplified it is. Faith is like a simple game it's like playing Simon says you just take the time you hear from the Father you hear from the Spirit of God and when you know it's the Spirit of God you know, you know, Simon says you're only supposed to act when Simon says something. Jesus said the voice of another you will not respond to. So when it's not Simon, you don't do it. But when Simon says it, you're supposed to act. When the Spirit of God is speaking to you through the Word and through the things, you're constantly paying attention to listen to the Spirit. Is, what is the Spirit of God saying? 
And the Spirit of God is speaking through the Word of God. And the Spirit of God is speaking in your heart. And He's leading and guiding you because you are a child of God. And them that are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. And you are God's children. And to agree with anything different is to agree with the world, to agree with the enemy, and not to agree with God. But I know we're way better than that. We've learned. We've at least got smart enough to know God's right, and we'll agree with him. So we're just listening. When every situation comes, we're like, I already know that he's going to want us to move forward because the whole game of Simon Says is getting to the place where you're, you're listening and you're with this whole group, but you're trying to pay attention so that when that tells you to go forward, that you're so attentive that you're the one that goes forward all the right times and that you're the one that finishes the course. So you know where the end of the you know where the end of things are, you know where you're trying to get to, but you're just listening. Okay. I know where we're going, how you want to go about this. All right. So wisdom is actually hidden out in the open. Though God's wisdom is hidden or concealed for us, not from us, to our glory. We will discover that wisdom is not hard to find. In fact, wisdom is out in the open making a scene. Do what? Because I just showed you in the Word how it's concealed for us, how God has set it aside for us, how it's been hidden in God. But wisdom is actually out in the open making a scene. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, we're going to start with verse 20. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 starts with, Wisdom cries without or outside. So the very first statement to this whole section is, Wisdom's outside screaming. She utters her voice in the street. She cries in the chief place of concourse or trade. So she's out there where money's being exchanged. She's out there in the middle of commerce, wisdom is. Crying out. In the opening of the gates. In this city, she utters her words. The opening of the gates is where all the, the leaders of the, the community are in the Bible meeting at. So wisdom is yelling even within the leadership of a society. Saying, how long, you simple or naive ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, the, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make known my words to you, because I have called, and you refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, but you have set at nothing all my counsel. You treated it as it was nothing. And with none of my reproof, I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. When your fear comes as desolation, and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish comes upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, for that they hated or despised knowledge and did not choose the fear or the reverence of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkens to me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. First section here. I says wisdom is hidden out in the open. 
Though it's been hidden back for us. And I've already made the statement, God's not withholding it from us. But the truth is, it's right, it's right out in the open, screaming, yelling. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. Go with me to Proverbs 8. Just go over a few chapters. Proverbs 8, chapter 8, verse 1. Does not wisdom cry, scream, yell, and understanding put forth her voice? She stands in the top of high places by the way, in the places of the path. She cries at the gate, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. To you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of man. Oh, you simple, understand wisdom. And you fools, be you of understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understands and write to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. And find out knowledge of witty inventions. Wisdom is out in the open. Though it's been hidden for us, it's out in the open. Let's go to Ephesians 3, 9 through 12. I have that one written down for time's sake. Ephesians 3, 9 through 12 says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hidden in God, who created all things by Christ Jesus, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. What point am I trying to make on that? Wisdom even today not only is available to us, but God is actually using us to demonstrate his manifold wisdom. Remember where I referenced Corinthians earlier, where it says if the princes of this world had known it, they would not have crucified him. But now, the, the manifold wisdom of God is on display through each and every one of us. Every time we believe God, every time we walk in the will of God, every time we find out the ways of God, and then and once we find out what His will is, we get the wisdom and the path to see the fruition of it. It is a demonstration of of the wisdom of God through each and every one of us. Many of us reference this as the glory of God. God is showing out his wisdom through each and every one of us. Though it was set aside for us, that set aside or hidden was means it was purpose for us. But wisdom actually was out in the streets crying and yelling, just looking for those that had ears to hear. And the ones that didn't have ears to hear or with, you know, in other words, they could hear it being spoken, but they rejected it. In Hosea, the Bible says, for a lack of knowledge, 
My people are destroyed. And that has been quoted many times. And we like to quote that one section. For a lack of knowledge, my people are destroyed. But the next statement he says is because you have rejected knowledge. In other words, knowledge was there. Knowledge was available to you. The knowledge was crying out. Wisdom was crying out. But you didn't have the ears to hear. You rejected it. And even now, the manifold wisdom of God is on display to all the powers in this world. And is done through the church. I'm going to show you ways where this was followed through. In Isaiah chapter 6, 9 through 10, There's a, um, there's a prophetic word that is given out, and then we're going to see this f prophetic work in full demonstration over and over again. That wisdom's out in the open, and it's there for us, and you are the perfect candidate to receive wisdom. Isaiah 6, 9 through 10, and he said, Go and tell this people, Hear you indeed, but understand not, and see you indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. So the prophet starts talking about people that are hearing, but they don't understand what they're hearing. They're not, they're not, they're not, they're not giving it the lot of day. They're not giving it the time they need. They're seeing it. This actual verse was referenced many times. Matthew 13, 15. Let's look at verse. Uh, let's, uh, do, 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 do. Start with verse 9. Matthew 13, let's start with verse 9. It says, Who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said to him, Why speak you to them in parables or story examples? He answered them and said, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whoever has to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever has not from him shall be taken away, even that he has. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not. In hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing you shall hear. And shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, or dull. And their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Now the Passion Translation. Start with verse 9. It says, if you're able to understand this, then you need to respond. That's that verse. If you have ears to hear, who has ears to hear, let him hear. One of the things about hearing is if you're able to understand this, then you need to respond. Faith is a response to hearing the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, right? 
the realization of faith is that you respond. When you heard the gospel and you believed on it, and you fully understood it enough, it didn't mean you have to... You it, Again, understanding is not of the head, it's of the heart. These things are spiritually discerned, and it, 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 your, your IQ means nothing. IQ... IQ will never help you understand the things of God, and your IQ will never, your lack of IQ may will never keep you from understanding the things of God. These things are revealed by the Spirit of God. And let me tell you, your born again, recreated spirit is completely whole, completely sound. So if you're able to understand this, you respond. When we respond, when we first heard the message or when we heard the message and it hit us to the place that we're like, wait a minute, I don't understand all this with my head, but there's something tell, making me realize God loves me. Jesus died for me. He died for my sins, and I need him in my life. And the response was, is you believed with your heart and you confessed with your mouth. Then his disciples approached Jesus and asked, Why do you always speak to people in these hard-to-understand parables? He explained, You've been given the intimate experience of insight into the hidden truth and mysteries of the realm of heaven's kingdom. But they have not. For everyone who listens with an open heart will receive progressively more revelation until he has more than enough. But those who don't listen with an open, teachable heart, even the understanding that they think they have will, they have will be taken from them. That's why I teach the people using parables, because they think they're looking for truth. Yet because their hearts are unteachable, they never discover it. Although they will listen to me, they never fully perceive the message I speak. The prophecy of Isaiah describes them perfectly. Although they listen carefully to everything I speak, they don't understand the thing I say. They look and pretend to see, but the eyes of their hearts are closed. Their minds are dull and slow to perceive. Their ears are plugged and, and are hard of hearing. And they have deliberately shut their eyes to the truth. Otherwise, they would open their eyes to see and open their ears to hear, and open their minds to understand, then they would turn to me and let me instantly heal them. What am I saying to you? I'm drawing attention that wisdom's out in the open, but not everybody's responding to wisdom. Though wisdom has been hidden from us, or hidden, not from us, but hidden for us, and we talk about the hidden mysteries and the hidden things of God. I'll make mention of this. I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But if you look at the reference that said that if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They would not have crucified him. But if, if you go study... The prophets, those that knew and, and studied the prophets, Isaiah 53 plainly references what he's about to go through. It was not hidden. None of the things of God were hidden. They were all, he, he, he always outly spoke them. But they closed their eyes to it. They closed their ears to it. They became dull of hearing. Even in this sense, Jesus is sitting there saying, look, guys, you have committed yourself to me. And for you, these things are open. But And, I, and I'll reveal them to you. But th I, I speak in parables because there's people out there that they're coming because they want to hear a word. They want to say, I was there. I heard the word. But they're really not going to get it because the purpose of them not getting it is they're really not seeking to understand. There's a lot of people that can quote the Word of God. But there's not many people that get the wisdom of God. 
Let's go to Mark chapter 4. I'm just going to go straight out of the, the Passion Translation. Mark 4, 9 through 12. It says, if you understand this, then you need to respond. Afterwards, Jesus' disciples and those that closed to him remained behind to ask Jesus about his parable. He said to them, the privilege of intimately knowing the mystery of God's kingdom realm has been granted to you, but not to others where everything is revealed in parables. For even when they see what, they, what I do, they will not understand. And when they hear what I say, they will learn nothing. Otherwise, they would repent and be forgiven. Now, y'all know I overkill some, and that's fine. I want to make sure you get it. When you walk away, you're like, I heard it, I heard it, I heard it, I heard it. But also, if you notice this, Mark references that they would hear and be forgiven. The original prophecy says that they'll hear and be healed. I just thought I would make a small plug in there to remind you that forgiveness and sins and healings are right there connected together. And if you can receive your forgiveness of sins, you can receive your healing. Glory to God. Again, it's not hard. Most people make that hard because they won't hear that. They reject the wisdom. Hallelujah. In my, the commentary here in this, the Passion Translation, they said in Verse 11, it says, the privilege of intimate knowing. He said to them, the privilege of intimately knowing the mysteries of God's kingdom realm has been granted to you, but not to others where everything is revealed in parables. It says, or to the outsiders, the Aramaic is backwards ones. See, all the world's operating backwards. It's been perverted. It's not operating like God wants it to operate, but the church is moving forward. God's work in the church, and the church is actually lining things up. Jesus spoke allegorically so that those who didn't care to understand couldn't understand. Yet he knew that the hungry ones would seek out the hidden meaning of the parables and understand the secrets of God's kingdom's realm. It is still that way today, and it referenced Proverbs 25 too, which is what we start out with. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. It's the honor of kings to search out a matter. Which the hungry ones lines up with the ones that please God. For without faith it's impossible to please him. We must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Notice that's a two-part situation. There's a lot of people that believe he is. You know, James says that even the devils believe that he is. Satan believes he is. They know it. But he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And he says the ones that hear, the hungry ones, would seek out the hidden meaning of the parables and understand the secrets of God's kingdom realm. It is still that way today, and it's what we're referencing if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let him seek out the Lord. Lord, give me understanding. Luke, chapter 8, 9 and 10. Luke, chapter 8, verses 9 and 10. Later, his disciples came to Jesus and asked him privately what deeper meaning was found in this parable. See, they began to catch what they're doing. They're seeking him out. They want, Lord, we don't quite understand it. What's the deeper meaning? We know you're, you're, you're trying to tell us something. Help us. He said, you have been given a teachable heart to perceive the secret hidden mysteries of God's kingdom realm. But to those who don't have a listening heart, my words are merely stories. Even though they have eyes, 
They are blind to the true meaning of what I say. And even though they listen, they won't receive full revelation. They won't, re they won't receive full revelation. How many people out there know the Bible and they just think it's a good storybook? How many people that even claim to believers start not that don't believe that the word is that the Bible is the infallible word of God? And they mispick things trying to say, well, it contradicts it. John chapter 12. Verses 36 through 41. John 12, starting verse 36, I'm still reusing the Passion Translation. It says, So believe and cling to the light while I am with you, so that you will become children of light. After saying this, Jesus then entered into the crowd and hid himself from them. Even with the overwhelming evidence of all the many signs and wonders that Jesus had performed in front of them, his critics still refused to believe. This fulfilled the prophecy given by Isaiah, Lord, who has believed our message, who has seen the unveiling of your great power, and the people were not able to listen, believe, were not able to believe, for Isaiah also prophesied, God has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts to the truth. So with their eyes and hearts closed, they cannot understand the truth nor turn to me so that I could instantly cleanse and heal them. I said, Isaiah said these things because he had seen and experienced the splendor of Jesus and prophesied about him. It says Isaiah actually saw and experienced the splendor of Jesus in his prophecies. And he starts prophesying about people that would physically see it and reject it. And here was a group. I have heard many testimonies. I have heard testimonies of people that were raised from the dead in the hospital. The doctor had already pronounced them dead. They were raised from the dead. The doctor walks back in and sees them al alive and looks at them straight out and just says, I don't believe it, and walked away. So I, in other words, I refuse to believe what I see. I reject this and walked away. These guys were doing the same thing. They were, I mean, wisdom, wisdom cries out in the streets. Wisdom screaming, how long will you be naive? How long will you be simple? The wisdom of God through the church. And that, that person is raised from the dead and that doctor is still saying, I choose not to believe. Verse 40 said that God, had bonded, God has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts to the truth. So with their eyes and hearts closed, they cannot understand the truth nor turn to me so that I can instantly cleanse and heal them. The commentary down there says, or closed their minds. The Aramaic is translated darkened their hearts. Their Aramaic indicates that they did this to themselves. Got it. See, when you get something translated, sometimes our tone gets put on it, and we don't get the tone of the original translation, and he's drawing attention. God didn't really blind them. It indicates that they did this to themselves rather than God doing this. The Aramaic is translated cleansed. The Greek is translated healed. Both are included here. People, back to what I said when I referenced Hosea 4.6, for lack of knowledge, my people are destroyed. And it says you have rejected knowledge. We're not them. We're recognizing. We're beginning to, sometimes, we, you know, 
It's, it's just so common that we get into this works mentality that even once we hear the will of God, we get excited about the will of God, we have services where the will of God is, is revealed to us, we jump, we shout, we're dancing, we're excited. Oh, glory to God, He wants to heal me, He's healed me. Oh, glory to God, He wants me to prosper. Hallelujah. And then we go out and say, okay, God, if you're blessed. Now that I know you, that's what you want, I got this. Oh, really? We've got to seek out the wisdom of God. But it's out open. All we've got to do is dig a little deeper. Get a little hungrier. Recognize. Hallelujah. One more, Acts 28. I'm about to, we're getting down to this. We're getting to the wire. Y'all, y'all keep believing God with me for just a little bit longer. Acts 28, verses 23 through 28. I'm still using the passage translation. It says, So they set a time to meet with Paul. On that day, an even greater crowd gathered where he was staying. From morning until evening, Paul taught them, opening up the truths of God's kingdom realm with convincing arguments from both the law and the prophets. He tried to persuade them about Jesus. Some were converted, but others refused to believe. They argued back and forth, still unable to agree among themselves. They were about to leave when Paul made one last statement to them. The Holy Spirit stated it well when he spoke to your ancestors through the prophet Isaiah. I send you to this people to say to them, you will keep learning but not understanding. You will keep staring at truth, but not perceiving it. For your hearts are hard and insensitive to me. And you must be hard of hearing, for you've closed your eyes so that you won't be troubled by the truth. And you've covered your ears so that you won't have to listen and be pierced by what I say. For then you would have to respond and repent so that I could heal your hearts. So listen well. This wonderful salvation given by God is now being presented to the non-Jewish nations and they will believe and receive it. Hallelujah. Praise God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, it says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestations of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, little G-O-D, whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Even today, the wisdom of the gospel is constantly being preached. It's preached out in the open. But it says if our gospel be hid, it's hid to those that are lost. And it makes a reference. This, there's some key things here. Where you can get some understanding about maybe what's happening to you in some areas of your lives and may also be what's happening to your loved ones that are lost, that are not accepting Christ. It says that it's hidden, but it says the reason it's hidden is because the God of this world, which is Satan, the enemy, has blinded the hearts of men lest they receive the gospel. They, if, they, if the light could shine through them, they could receive it. 
See, blindness is a hindrance or an inability to process light. Many things can cause natural blindness. Right here. If we blocked all, if we turned out all the lights in here, blocked all the lights from coming in from the exterior outside, every person in this room would be blind. Your eyes may work just fine, but without any light, you're blind. Some of us, our eyes are, are acting up and it's not processing the light quite correctly. Notice that when it referenced Moses, it says his eyes did not grow dim. In other words, he fully received light. I noticed when I started, before I started having to wear glasses and I was just using the little readers beforehand, that I could be in an office that had just regular light from the office and I would have a hard time reading something. I had to make sure that I, I, I had glasses on and things like that. And I could take... The very thing that I was having difficulty reading in that office, and I could carry it outside in a bright sunny day, and I could look down at it and see it, see it just fine. What was the difference? The amount of light. Many things can keep you from receiving light. First of all, it may be just the condition, your, your personal condition. The light might be shining just fine out in the open. But something inside you is keeping you from receiving that light and processing that light. Other things, like I said, if we blocked out all the light in here, it isn't your ability to process it. It's the, it's the ability for light to shine in, in that, that area. I think if you ever go to some of these uh, caverns around here and the deeper you get, people start experiencing true darkness. All darkness is, you can't keep getting darker and darker. All darkness is, is the absence of light. Once there's no light, you've reached the darkest you can get. Other things can cause you to do it. When we have an eclipse, when you have a true total eclipse, the moon lines up just right in front of the sun, and it blocks the light of the sun hitting the earth. Is the sun still shining? So the process of everything, because then, you know, we reference John, he says, you know, we need, we need to be children of light. We need to embrace the light. Embracing the light means embracing the wisdom and the knowledge of God. And then we're to be lights. If there's something that seems to be hidden from you, maybe there's something that's hindering you from receiving the light to be able to see it. Sometimes we seek God and get the wisdom of God. Sometimes we need to deal with the enemy that's trying to stand in our way and block us. Sometimes we need to look at our own selves and say, what am I doing that I won't, I'm not open to receive it? Because if you don't have a teachable heart, you have, given yourself, you have enabled yourself from receiving the light of God. And I know this is a very similar close of what I've given before, but we will continue to do this because those that hear... And understand, need to respond. And one of the key elements, it's not the only element, but it's a good, it's a continued starting element. I, that we keep referencing is the prayer in Ephesians chapter 1, starting with verse 16. Ephesians 1, 16, the Apostle Paul makes this statement. I cease not to give thanks for you, make a mention of you in my prayers, that the Lord, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him. We caught our attention on that last week. Now look at the next phrase. The eyes 
of your understanding being enlightened. Other words as being illuminated. That the eyes of your understanding that you are able to receive the light. See, by giving by praying and believing God and seeking God after a spirit of wisdom and revelation, the next thing it is is you're praying, Lord, help my eyes to see what you're wanting me to see. Help my ears to hear what you're wanting me to hear. Because he says that you may have the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him and the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or illuminated. I think this is the Amplified says being flooded with light. That you may know. See, all these things, what happens if you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation that your eyes are understanding and you're enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion in every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come. He put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is us, which is his body the fullness of him that fills all in all. Guys, I would continue to encourage you to mine after wisdom, to seek after wisdom, to dig deeper for the wisdom of God. If there's something that you're needing, that you're lacking, that's hindering you from walking in the things of God, even though you may know it's God's will for a situation, you know something's hindering you. There's something blocking you. You're not quite getting the light of God in this situation. Continue what we said. First of all, realize that wisdom has been set aside for us and we have access to it. But wisdom is not hiding itself like you think. It's actually out in the open screaming and yelling. How many times have you gotten revelation knowledge and you're like, that's been there the whole time? Many times you get revelation knowledge and there's a piece of you that goes, I knew that. But I didn't. And now, of course, you know, there's always that example, especially in the cartoons where the light bulb goes off. Ching. Seek God for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Get the wisdom of God on a matter. Continue to pray aligns with Ephesians prayers. Lord, give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation that I might know you. that the eyes of my understanding be flooded with your light. If you feel like something's hindering you, start telling the devil, devil, you're hindering this. Get out of here. You have the authority. If you're believing God for your loved ones, maybe the reason they haven't received the gospel is it's because the God of this world is keeping their hearts blinded to it. But it's your family member. It's just the devil's tough luck. They were born kin to you. You have authority in their life. Satan, I bind you from blocking their hearts. Father, I pray that you would send laborers in their path. To minister the light of the gospel to them. Help them to see the light of the gospel. So they will have the opportunity to respond. Sometimes he's hidden our heart because he makes sure they don't go where places the gospel is being preached. Sometimes the church isn't going out and getting to them. But that's not us, is it? So say this with me, Lord, Lord give, me give me ears to hear. I thank you for them. I thank you, Lord. Now say this, I'm quick, I'm, quick. I'm, sharp. I'm sharp, I'm bright. I'm bright. See all three of those right there. I'm good looking. Good looking. I'm very rich. very rich and a major blessing.
Don't get anything out of this. Amen. Praise God. Well, before we close out, does anybody you need something? Huh? Oh, I'll close my media out. Sorry, guys. Forgot you were there. But we love you. Really. So, maybe try sometime coming up here. We're at 719 North Tyler Street here in Big Sandy, Texas. Come and hang out with us. If you can't make it, though, just keep hanging out with us on social media. Let us know you're there. If you need us, reach out to us. We love you. God bless.